Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I want to talk about how to defeat a narcissist. Well, I'm going to go into a couple of different ways that you defeat the narcissist. When you're dealing with a narcissist, one of the reasons that people have a hard time getting over a narcissist is because they make the narcissist too important in their lives, okay? You've built that narcissist up to be something or someone that they're not. And at the end of the relationship, you start to see that they really weren't who you thought they were. So now you want to, you know, you want this toxic person out of your life and you want to know how do you defeat this narcissist? The way you defeat this narcissist is by not making them important in your life, not responding to them, not giving them a minute of your time, you know, not acknowledging them. If you see the narcissist out, you don't say anything to them. They are nobody. They are like a stranger on the street. So in order to defeat the narcissist, you have to take the control back and not give any control to the narcissist. And how does a narcissist get control over you? They get control over your emotions. This is how a narcissist, you know, has power over you by controlling your emotions, even anger. When you're angry at the narcissist, when you get angry and you're thinking about that narcissist, you're giving that narcissist power by getting angry. You're letting them get to you. And so people say, well, that's easier said than done, right? Because especially when you first leave a narcissist, you're going to be angry because you feel played. So the thing is this, you guys, it doesn't happen right away. You have to go through those emotions that you go through until you actually see the narcissist for who they are. So it's okay to be angry when you leave a narcissist. It's okay to be sad when you leave a narcissist. It's okay to have all of these feelings because it's a death to you. When you leave the narcissist, it's a death, not the death that the narcissist left your life, but the death of that dream that you had, that dream that you had of being with the narcissist and living happily ever after has been crushed. That's what you miss. You're not missing the narcissist because the narcissist was toxic. What you're missing is what could have been with that narcissist. But what you, you know, the hurt comes in the sense that you thought that this person was going to fulfill whatever dreams or fantasies that you had, and they were never going to fulfill those dreams and fantasies because it was all a lie with the narcissist. They built up those fantasies in your mind because they were after something that you had. That's why you always got to look back and say, well, what was it that I had that that narcissist wanted? So now you come out of this relationship and you're, you're filled with you know, a bunch of emotions. Okay. Some people, it takes them a long time to get over a narcissist. And for me, when I was dealing with a particular narcissist that I, you know, the malignant narcissist, it took me a while to get over this person till I finally saw him for who he was. I mean, I saw him for who he was, but it was the fantasy of the dream that was crushed. Okay. So now you're coming out of it, you have your emotions of anger, sadness, revenge, all of these emotions are filling you up. You, you're living your life, you're not talking to the narcissist, you're no contact with the narcissist, and you want to know, how, how do you defeat this person? How do you get back at this person? First of all, you never ever have to do revenge on a narcissist because a narcissist will sink their own ship, okay? Because of the way they live. They live reckless lives. So they're going to have a bad ending. It may not happen today or tomorrow, but in time, it will all catch up to them because when you spit in the wind, it will come back and hit you in the face. And that's what happens to a narcissist. Later on in life, they're going to feel loneliness. They're going to be bitter. You, they're not going to have the resources that they had. And, you know, they end up being very much alone. A lot of them get sick because they abuse their bodies. So when you seek revenge on a narcissist, you're taking your energy you know, and you may feel a certain sense of, you know, 
satisfaction, but it's also going to tear you up inside because that anger is going to tear you up inside. This is why in order to defeat a narcissist is to let that go, let it go. Because, you know, you have to acknowledge the fact that you got played. You have to, you you guys, you just have to, sometimes you got to acknowledge it. All right. You weren't aware, whatever the reason was, it's not your fault because you didn't know at the time, nobody taught you it, but you have to let it go. But the thing is, you know, acceptance is how you heal. But in order to defeat the narcissist, you have to let them go, let them go and say to yourself, you know what? I, every time you start to think about the narcissist, you have to redirect your mind onto something else and think about your future and say, well, yeah, it sucks. I wasted how many years, but I could have wasted my whole life. And I have a lot of people that comment on my post and say, you know, I'm so angry. I wasted two years. I wasted three years. I wasted six months. And I always tell them, but it could have been worse. You could have wasted your whole life with this person. If you didn't have children, you could have had children and and had to deal with that that misery of trying to co-parent with a narcissist. If you got out of a relationship with a narcissist and you didn't have kids with them, you're one of the lucky ones, okay? You're one of the lucky ones because when you have children with a narcissist, it's a very, you know, rocky road with that person. Yeah, you can move on and you could have a life. Some some people can, and some people are picking up the pieces with the children and can't, but you can if you really want to move on in your life even after you had children. But the thing is, it's harder because you have to co-parent with somebody who's constantly, you know, trying to make your life difficult. This is what a narcissist wants to do. They want to make, pay you back and make your life difficult. So everything that you co-parent with the narcissist, they're going to make it difficult for you, okay? Whether it's visitation, money for the children, you know, talking badly to the children about you or smearing you, you know, now you can't just throw them to the curb. But here's the thing, you guys, in order to defeat the narcissist, you have to totally detach And, you know, the way you detach is to refocus your mind on other things, positive things. You have to look forward, not look backward. You have to think where you're going, not where you were. Where am I going in my life? What are my goals in my life? You know, go listen to my um, podcast on, you know, whether you've endured narcissistic abuse, you know, the six signs of you've endured narcissistic abuse, because I talk about a lot of this. And what one of the things in order to defeat the narcissist is to be able to live without them, be able to be happy without the narcissist. You've got to understand something. That narcissist was not all that. You've built them in your mind and maybe right now you're going through a rough time. Maybe you haven't met somebody that does it for you and you keep falling back and thinking about the narcissist. But that doesn't mean that the narcissist was right for you. That just means that you don't have anything else going on in your life. And this is why you keep, you know, reflecting back to the narcissist. You have to push forward. You've got to ride that wave. You defeat the narcissist because when the narcissist comes back, nine times out of 10, almost all the time, almost all the time, not every time though, some narcissists don't come back and they don't come back because either they're doing well or, you know, they realize they can't fool you, but most of them will try you. And especially if they get desperate out there, And that's when you get your satisfaction, when they try to hoover you back or they reach out to you, they text you, or they send a message to your friends or family saying, oh, they're thinking about you, they miss you. When you give them no response, this is how you defeat the narcissist, because now you have not made them a part of your life. You don't utter one word to the narcissist or even acknowledge them whatsoever. You just block across the board. If they keep reaching out, you just keep blocking. You don't say anything. This is how you defeat the narcissist because now you're letting them know they have no control over you anymore. You also defeat the narcissist by living your best life, living your best life by, you know, going out. Happiness is a choice, you guys. 
And you'll realize that when you've been through really hard times, I, my life is a very difficult life in what I deal with in dealing with children with special needs. It's a very difficult light, life and having to have co-parented with, uh, you know, a co-parent that really was not there for my children that had a disability. It was tough, you guys, and it still is tough. But happiness is my choice. My choice is to be happy and to be happy with my children and to live my best life and do things with my children that make us happy, to improve our home, to make us happy. This is how you defeat the narcissist because you're not giving them any time in your brain, okay? You realize that they are who they are. They're toxic and they're not going to change. So you defeat the narcissist by recognizing that they are not going to change, that they are not going to get another minute in your life, and that you're going to live your best and happy life. You're going to, you know, push yourself. And this is what you have to do after leaving a narcissist. You have to push yourself. You have to do things that may be uncomfortable, like go to the gym or take a walk or join a meetup group or join a hiking group or, you know, reach out to friends and network and do things that you normally wouldn't do, but you're pushing yourself to have a a full, fulfilling life. And this is all to get your mind off the narcissist and to heal, okay? So you defeat the narcissist by keeping yourself busy and filling your life with other things. I always say to people that are self-reflecting back on the narcissist and reminiscing back on the narcissist, I always ask them, well, what do you got going on in your life now? You keep bringing up the narcissist. Yeah, you miss them. We get that. But what do you have going on in your life? Do you have your own thing? You've got to have a purpose in your life. You've got to know, you know, where you're going and what you want. Without a purpose, you're going to always look back and you're going to look back at the narcissist and reminisce because that was your focus was the narcissist and making you happy. Now you realize that narcissist is not going to make you happy. So what's, what are you going to fill that with? You got to think about this. What are you going to fill that with? What are you going to refocus your mind on in making you happy? What makes you happy? You got to, you got to figure out what makes you happy and you've got to appreciate the little things. Okay. Like a good friend of mine, he said, happiness is everything that doesn't cause you pain. Okay. Happiness to me is having your peace. Okay. Having your peace, being able to relax, enjoying things, you know, like enjoying nature, enjoying music, you know, going out, having laughs, enjoying the people that are around you. So, you know, that narcissist, you know, that you look back on, they are no longer your focus. They're no longer your focus. So you're going to defeat that narcissist by refocusing your mind on other things. And what does this do? That makes the narcissist not important. And this is what kills a narcissist by making them nothing. Okay. You want to defeat a narcissist? You make them nothing. You don't even show them anger because anger shows you care. Okay. Anger shows you care. So you've got to, it's, it's a really hard thing to do, you guys. All right. But when you start to feel angry about the narcissist or you feel sad about the narcissist, you have to say, uh, 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 what do I got to do today? Okay. Let me get my list. These are the things I got to do. I got to clean my house. I got to do my laundry. I got to go food shopping. You know, what are my career goals? I got to write this essay or I got to work on this. What are my money goals? What are my health goals? Oh, I'm going to go for a walk today. I'm going to go to the gym today. I'm going to join a co-ed sports team, whatever it could be. I'm going to do pickleball. I'm going to go play tennis with my friends. You see what I mean? You're redirecting your mind. Mind. You're redirecting your mind on other things. It's that's proactive in your future. You're moving towards the future. Okay. You've got to learn to be happy with what you have. You've got to learn to be happy on your own, even if you don't have other people in your life. And this is challenging in the beginning. Okay. It's challenging in the beginning, but guess what? The longer you do it, the stronger you become. And this is what the narcissist doesn't realize. They think they could just bounce back into your life a couple months later, a couple years later, and here you are. You went through that mourning and grieving period, but now guess what? You've gotten stronger. 
the longer you are away from that narcissist, the stronger you will become. I promise you that. I'm living proof of this, all right? When you can live on your own, enjoy your life, and be happy, you become, you know, an indestructible person, all right? And this is this will be death to the narcissist. This will destroy the narcissist because they will have no effect on your emotions because you're good. You're good because you have other things that are making you happy. You don't need that narcissist. You're living a sound life and you're progressing towards your future. See, when you were with the narcissist, you weren't progressing anywhere. You were going in a circle back and forth arguing with the narcissist because narcissists love to fight. It gives them a power trip to put you down and feel superior. Now you're living a life of peace. You're not dealing with the narcissist that you had to walk on eggshells and be afraid every time you brought something up to them, they were going to give you the silent treatment. You no longer have to deal with that shit. Now you live your life according to you and the people that come into your life are people that you know, accept you for who you are. You're not walking on eggshells. They build you up. They don't tear you down. You want to be with people that build you up, not tear you down. You don't want to be with people that give you that covert narcissistic smirk or that stare or stare through you. These are not people that are in your corner, okay? You want to be with people that, you know, that accept you for who you are. Okay, a narcissist will never accept you for who you are. This is why you'll never be happy with a narcissist because they're never happy. So if they're never happy, guess what? They're not going to make you happy because they're going to project all that toxicity onto you. So if you want to defeat the narcissist, you become a type of person that's got it together. You got it together with your health, you're working out, you're taking care of yourself, you got it together with your career and your job, and you've got it together with your social life. You're out there networking, meeting other people, and even if these other people are not your long-term partners, you're making friends. You're making friends, you're keeping busy, and you're doing things, okay? And you have to understand that that rush that you got with the narcissist, most likely it was lust, You guys, you got to realize this. It was lust nine times out of 10 with the narcissist because it love doesn't hurt. Okay. Lust hurts and lust is short term and lust doesn't last. So if you're sitting there and you're, you're feeling, you know, you're getting these pains and everything like that, reminiscing about the narcissist, I guarantee you, you were lusting that narcissist. You didn't love the narcissist because what is it to love somebody who's out to hurt you? Why would you love somebody who doesn't love you, who doesn't care about you, who doesn't want to work things out with you, who won't humble themselves? A narcissist won't humble themselves. So what is there to love about somebody like that? There's nothing to love about somebody like that. Nine times out of 10, you're lusting them. You are lusting them and you've got to recognize it's a lust feeling. You're lusting them and you're not feeling that lust feeling with somebody else that you meet. But the thing is, you know, narcissist is like, a narcissist is like kind of like a hot fling. All right. It, you know, the chemistry is great in in the beginning. You may have good sex with the narcissist in the beginning and you're holding on to that. Okay. You're holding on to that, but that's not real love. Love is something it's almost, love is like two friends that connect and become as one and they're working together and they have each other's back. A narcissist doesn't have your back. Understand this. And this is one of the clues that you know you're dealing with a narcissist. When the chips are down, that narcissist abandons you and leaves you. They don't want to be bothered. Okay? So why would you call somebody like that somebody that you love? That's not somebody that you love. That's somebody that you lusted. You lusted. You wanted to be with them. You wanted. You felt that chemistry. That's a totally different thing than a long-term relation where you're building and growing, and you know you're each other's life partner. Okay, you're building together, and you you feel that safety and security and that peace that you have with that person. Okay, that's somebody that you love. You're building together, and you have each other's back, and you love the fact that that person has your back right? They're your ride or die. But see, a narcissist is not a ride or die. They're the kinds that will, you know, ride and then 
make take a powder and leave you when something better comes along. So in order to defeat, let me, you know, just cap off here so you guys really understand. In order to defeat the narcissist, you have to, you know, you've got to be into your own self and into your own life. And you no longer make the narcissist important. You make yourself important. You put yourself first in your wants, your needs. And when somebody comes along and they can match that, you compromise and you work with them. You don't become, you know, the self-love community out there on the internet that's all about themselves. You know, there's there's a difference. You can self-love yourself and respect yourself, but you don't want to come to a point where you're so much self-love that you don't know how to compromise with somebody because then you're just going to be alone the rest of your life, okay? And that's okay too, to be alone the rest of your life. But most people, it's good to have a, a companion and life partner. So, you have to, when somebody is showing you the same amount of kindness, caringness, you know, the same amount of energy, you have to match that, okay? You have to match that. And it's not just about your self-love. Self-love is about self-respect. Yes, you respect yourself and other people should respect you, but you also have to learn to give, okay? And this is what I, this is a big problem that I have with a lot of influencers that promote that self-love shit, okay? Is that they keep promoting self-love, 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 but what they should promote is how you need to compromise with a good person and you have to learn to give and surrender yourself and, and you know, work with somebody and to be able to humble yourself, you know? And, you know, you give to somebody else that would give for you, okay? You give to people that you know will give back to you, all right? But see, when people get so, you know, built up with the self-love, they forget when they meet somebody that you have to give too when you meet somebody, okay? So I, I went off tangent here, but the, the point I'm trying to make you guys in defeating the narcissist is you have to realize, you have to accept it. I, I can't say it any more than I could say it, all right? Because I've lived it my whole life. I have life experience. And I get these people that say, well, you know, where's your, your degree? I, I have life experience, the number one education that anybody could have because I've lived it, I've seen it, and I, I've been around it my whole life. And I will tell you, in order to live a happy life and to defeat the narcissist, you have to accept these people for who they are, but you keep them at a distance in your life. You don't make them part of your circle. You don't, you know, bring them in. You don't let them into your personal business. You keep them at a distance. You accept what happens. You move on from it and you're folk, you're looking forward because if you keep looking towards the past, you will miss the present and the future. So you've always got to keep pushing forward and, and you're looking at the whole picture. You're looking at your whole life. You're not just looking at a piece of your life. And in order to get to the end, you know, goal that you want, you've got to look forward at your goals and your purpose. And to defeat the narcissist means that you don't give them any time in your brain, in your mind. They are RIP. They were a piece of your life, a piece of the journey that you went through. Now you have got to let it go. Let it go. Let it go. You have to, you got to talk to yourself sometimes and say, I got to let it go in order to have my peace. I got to let it go and realize that, you know what? That's my past, but that's not my future. I have a whole future, a whole life ahead of me, and I've got to look forward. And this is how I defeat the narcissist because I've accepted it. I've let it gone. And now I'm defeating the narcissist because I'm never, ever going to let them back into my life. That's how you defeat the narcissist, by not letting them eat away at you or letting them back into your life and refocusing your mind on the positives and your goals and your purpose of what you've got to do in order to get ahead in your life. Get ahead means having your peace. It doesn't necessarily mean material possessions, although if you want to strive for those things, you can, all right, as long as you don't obsess about them. Your goal should be peace happiness, and being around good, kind people. That should be your goal. That's a happy life, being around good, kind people that love you and accept you and care about you no matter what you do, okay? 
That's who your people are, not the narcissist. So you defeat the narcissist by seeing them for who they are, the toxic person that they were. You accept it, you let it go, and now you're focusing in on your future, your future happiness and achieving your goals. And you say to yourself, every time you feel sad about the narcissist, you say to yourself, yeah, I feel really bad. I feel bad I got played. I feel bad, you know, about this or that, but... That is my past. That is not my future. I have to accept that that person will never change. And you know what? I've got to, you know, refocus and keep busy on what I've got to do for myself and to move forward. And if you have children, you're moving forward and focusing on your children. Okay? So I hope that helps you guys. If it does, hit the subscribe button. Please share the podcast. And I'm always trying to talk fast because it's the morning and that's when I get interrupted over here, you guys. <laughs> okay. So it, I'm like trying to get it all in. So you guys have a great day, have a great weekend. And don't forget, please subscribe and share the podcast. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question and you wanna get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio, where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp123 and also on Instagram the game exp123 okay and have a great day